everything start the recording switch screens all right uh welcome back guys to our 37th or 38th session of arcadia depending on which numbering scheme you prefer uh don't really have too much in the way of announcements uh good news is is that as soon as i get my february schedule finalized um i believe we might be able to take the arcadia back to weekly but i don't want to commit one way or the other quite yet i'm still waiting on confirmation so let's just say that that's possibly in the future uh let's see do i have any other announcements don't think i do so let's just go ahead and oh that is what i do need to say so uh as will become apparent uh i have deliberately set up uh, a scenario where the outcome is very much unclear uh some of the feedback i've gotten and taken to heart is that i might be too nice on you guys sometimes so i've deliberately tried to make scenarios where winning isn't like a full victory if that makes any sense and it'll it'll make sense once you start to see the situations um but i'm hoping that this will be a little bit more grittier than we usually are uh, a little bit more dark so just be aware uh but let's just go ahead and get started so the opener today is uh, very simple uh the start date is 51644.9 the Arcadia, the Torchbearer, and the Thunderchild have been on Border Patrol for the better part of a month now. During that time, you've all had a few close calls with the Dominion, but it was nothing you couldn't handle. Today is like any other day on patrol. You're stuck somewhere between alert and bored, at a semi-constant level of anxiety so that you're ready for when, not if, when, the Dominion tries something. It's supremely tiring, meaning the crew rotations have been more frequent for most bridge personnel. But whether or not that applies to you, entirely up to you. But before we start throwing things at you and uh, I start to challenge uh, some of your values here, I do believe that some of you had some scenes you wanted to act out on your own. So I wanted to give us some time to explore whatever uh, side conversations or scenes you had in mind. So open floor, uh, what do people have for us? Well, I don't have a scene with another character, but um, how how long is this after the special? Uh, after, oh, you mean the crossover special? Yeah. I would say that this is somewhere on the lines of two weeks since the special. Okay. Um, then I would have already done the thing I am proposing. I would okay. have done it basically immediately after getting back. Okay. Um, I'm just going to uh, design a quick uh, storage device for data, uh, something that has absolutely no remote access, and transfer the data from my implants into it and wipe the data in my implants. Okay, noted. I just I just want it in, in, in some kind of inert, inaccessible place, um, and I'll lock it in in my office somewhere. Okay. Noted. And uh, it should be clear, in case uh, I wasn't very clear. Um, this can be a character on either the Arcadia or the Torchbearer. It doesn't have to be one or the other. So it's whichever characters you guys want to play with. Because I, uh, I think people wanted to meet Densho. I think there was another scene with Gunluk. But you tell me. Um, Densha would actually call, uh, our new chief engineer, Lieutenant Commander Dante's, down to, uh, the lab that Zakul gave me last session. Okay. Yeah, I'd imagine whenever he walks in alone and I get a ping, I'd go try to figure out what's going on. <laughs> Alright, let me just, uh, you guys can get started as I play with tokens here, but yeah, uh, Densho, you are in the lab, and, uh... Walking in is uh, one Dante's, and that is still using old token art, so I will fix that. So you walk in and you see, like, she's basically standing with her back to you at a desk, and there's a uh, slightly dismantled tricorder there. And after hearing the door open, she'll turn around and it's just like, Ah, uh, uh, Lieutenant Commander, uh, how are you? I am... Doing all right. How are you, Ensign Densho? I'm doing fine. Um, I was actually wondering if you could help me out with an up 
upgrade, I think is the better term to use for it. And she'll kind of pick up the slightly dismantled tricord. It's just like, I was thinking about trying to implement the scanner of the tricorder into my hand and maybe finding a way to show the results on my eyes. Um, do you have any knowledge of how that might work? Uh, I'm sure we could figure it out. Um, yeah, I, I'd be happy to, to look into it and we can, like I said, we can figure it out. I don't have any specialty in tricorders, but you know, fixing things and figuring things out is what I do. I was, uh, you know, after our introduction, I uh, definitely, you know, looked in to your records and a little bit more into androids as well. And is uh, improving yourself this way like one of your goals? Um, it's more curiosity for a lack of a better way of putting it. Excellent. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's take a look at that and um, should be able to to get you all hooked up. I... All, right. all right, so what kind of role would that be if we had to do a role for it? So there's two ways we can go about this. One is you do a high difficulty single task or you do an extended task that uh, is a lower difficulty but obviously will take time. So it's just whichever you would really prefer. Um, I think an extended task would probably be better here. I'll leave that up to our chief engineer because I probably want him to take the lead on that. No, I, I would definitely agree just because this will be the, our first time formally working on improving you. <laughs> um, you know, it'd be good because I'll have to well, while I've looked at some logs, I'll have to know your schematics. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right, so let's... You know, see. I mean, we could also invite the uh, chief of operations. I think he's got some specialty here, at least in AI, too. So. Well, uh, the extended task, and I guess I will type it out in, in uh, chat as I say it. So you got a work track of 10, uh, you got a base diff uh, difficulty of, uh, let's make it 3, uh, let's say that your magnitude is also 3, and no resistance on this. Uh, the default task will be a either a daring or a control plus engineering. Would I be able to assist on this? I would say possibly, but your complication range is going to be bigger than uh, Dante's would be. Right. I was thinking, like, even though this would, is weaker for me, I think this is how it work. I was thinking, like, presence engineering. So basically explaining some of my wiring to him to help him out. Sure. Uh, that sounds great to me. Let's go with that. So you're rolling uh, presence engineering, one die. Dante's, you're rolling uh, either control or daring plus engineering at a difficulty of two, uh, difficulty of three. Uh, you are rolling a two dice base unless you want to uh, start giving me threat because you don't have any momentum at the moment. Oh uh, yeah, it'll be control engineering. Um, so, I, you know, I don't. We're in a war zone. Do we want to load up threat already? Um, that's up to you. All right, well, you got one success from Densho already. Uh, yeah, we'll try it without threat. Okay. I don't think I have any focuses. Computers? 
I would say that it's a tricorder and you're working on an Android, so yeah, computers could apply. Look at that. All right, so Dante's, since this is an extended task, uh, you're now going to be rolling me seven challenge die, or two plus your engineering, which is five, so seven overall. Very nice. Uh, do you have any talents that would count those effects? Uh, no. Unless we want to amp him up and give him a little more power. Well, it's it's one of the things where... Uh... Yeah, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, okay. Um, in that case, uh, you know, uh, Dante's, you, you've never really worked on an Android, much less Den Show before, based on what I'm hearing. But uh, it seems pretty straightforward. Uh, you just sort of have to break down the mechanical components, the actual scanning bits of the uh, tricorder, and you then just have to hook them up to Densho's uh, arm mechanics in such a way that doesn't impede other functions. And you're making uh, you're making good progress on this. Uh, so now the difficulty is only a two. And if I could get uh, one more roll from the, each of you, same rolls, Control Engineering from Dante's and Presence Engineering from Densho. All right, another success from Densho. Two is all you need. So yeah, Dante's, roll me another seven challenge die, and as long as you get three, you, uh, you succeed. Yeah. So as much as you said you don't know what you're doing you know exactly what you're doing like <laughs> by the end of it not only have you managed to completely integrate the tricorder subsystems into densho you have them specifically so that they can come up not only on her optical display for her but she can also sort of hold up her palm and it will display a small little hollow image of the results nice now we just need to add some spoilers and some <laughs> And let's go ahead and test this out. I'm just going to run a quick scan of Dante's and just basically look for basic life signs, that kind of mess. Cool. Uh, go ahead and roll me a reason and medicine. Uh, difficulty one. One success is all you need. Uh, yeah, you're detecting basic life signs. Uh, you're probably able to tell what he had for lunch, but uh, everything seems to be working. Interesting. Well, seems like our first test work. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant Commander. That's all I needed. Yeah, anytime. Um, and for future projects, um, you know, I mean, what what are your ambitions? Um basically just ways to improve myself in my work in the science department on this ship lieutenant commander so if i have any more ideas or if you have any yourself feel free to contact me excellent sounds good um this was this was fun thanks fun uh i'll agree with that for now yeah. So that's between uh, Densho and Dante's. Uh, other scenes people would like to get out of the way real fast. Or not really real fast. It's up to you guys. Do we need to fix someone's captain chair? Is that... No. I mean, unless Janice you better leave my captain sat chair. it. Leave my captain chair alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Because I, I seem to recall that Crowley, you had something. Uh, just stuff with the crew of the Torchbearer, but we can get to that if we're, when we're doing introductions. Well, I mean, you you have to remember that uh, the Torchbearer is doable here, so if you want to start doing crew introductions, just say the word and let me know where you're holding them. Uh, well, since we've already been out of space dock for a little bit, I'm pretty sure like we've all know each other. Mm -hmm. Uh... I'll just leave it open and say that Crowley's been doing... He's been three shifts straight right now. Um, 
doing uh, command stuff, typically looking over reports uh, over Intel, and also doing drills. And this is probably be coming up just to the halfway mark of his third shift in a row. Okay. Uh, I will situate you in your ready room. And anyone who feels like walking in, you can certainly walk yourselves in and introduce yourself. Or, you know, if you've got something for Crowley in general, just, you know, let me know. Uh, yeah, you'll get a, a chime from the computer um, with a call from your doctor, uh, Enon Vell. You just look at a pad, keep going over the information, he'll hear the chime, and he'll look over his, his, his computer and just like, right, uh, yes, doctor. Uh, Captain, uh, we were scheduled for another session 15 minutes ago. Are you still available for that? Uh, yeah. Does it have to be in the sick bed, or can it just be done in my quarters, or my ready room? House call, say no more. I'll be right there. I'll put the pad down and just kind of rub the side of my head. I was like, oh, man. The joys of being a captain. All right. Sure enough, uh, Vale arrives uh, in short order, lets himself in. And I have to step away for a few seconds, but you guys can keep on going. So go for it. Captain, uh, you missed our last session. I, one of the reasons I was brought on board, I believe, was to help you with your um, extrasensory abilities. Yes, um, I do appreciate that. Uh, it's just, it has been busy, especially going over information. The Dominion are moving around a lot, so Starfleet Intel has been giving me some files to go over, and that's can take it up my attention. Also, the Ah, uh, drill time on some of the responses to some of the uh, crews are a little slower than expected. And I need to realize I have a first officer. I can't keep doing all these tasks. <laughs> Rest assured, you're not the first captain I've had who's overworked himself. Uh, pretty standard in my line of work. Um, that said, I do need to perform an assessment for you since you did miss our last session, um, just to see how your mental acuity is holding. Very well. Let's uh, let's get started then. All right. I'll pull up the. Maybe it's a hologram. Maybe it's just on your pad. Um, but it's it's going to be a test largely of reflexes, um, and is in addition to your extrasensory abilities that I'll be sending you inputs for. Um, it will be a difficulty. F I, I guess I can just give you a test, right? Uh, yeah, the test is fine by me. Let's say it's a difficulty four fitness con task. All right. Uh, I don't know what focus would apply to this. Um. Do you do you have, have any like? Uh, I have com composure, espionage, sabotage, athletics, <laughs> diplo. Uh, this is more of a, just a general stress test. Okay, so composure, yeah. Mm, sure. Sounds good to me. I'm not going to burn anything here, because the uh, difficulty four with two dice, yeah! <laughs> ah. Par for the course. Captain, that, that, is, that is worse than your first uh, metrics when I came aboard. Uh, what what shift, shift rotations have you been taking? Oh, uh, this is third shift. Straight. Straight? Yep. <sighs> And Arcadia hours, too, not the new hours we're supposed to be using. So, I, I know we've had this argument before, Captain. I know that the Vulcans can go for long periods of time without um, a decrease in their ability, but you are half Betazoid, and our extrasensory powers demand sleep. As your doctor, I am ordering you to bed rest. Human bed rest. Be glad I'm not giving you Betazoid rest. That's an extra three hours. All right. And I, I actually, like, write down a little subscription or prescription for you. What is this? 
it says, go the fuck to sleep. Oh, the Samuel L. Jackson book. Yes. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a copy of that as well. <laughs> um, well, very well. Crowley decline? Yes, Captain. Ship's here for the next eight hours. I'll do my best for you, sir. Keep it a smooth ride. I need some sleep, apparently. Of course, Captain. Oh, tell me, Vel. How many captains have you had to deal with? Well, I'm a, I'm a bit of a specialist, but... Um... About, I think this is my. You were my fourth. Now uh, I spend most of my time, uh, most of my commission actually on Betazoid, working there. I should get down there sometime after this war is done. Hopefully. And I can't um, lie that um, it it always does bother me how close we are to the front. Betazoid, not. Here, I, I know my duty. Very well. I'm going to go get some rest, and uh, hopefully the next test we do, better results. Maybe make it a little easier. <laughs> These aren't easy things we're asking you to do, I realize. Yeah, well, jumping around too much as a kid, didn't get a chance to really hone in the ability to read other people's emotions. Well, Captain, I'm a doctor. I'm not going to help you win the war by analyzing patterns for you. This is how I can help you win the war. It's by making sure you're the best you can be. Right, well, I appreciate it. I'll try and be a captain that's not going to um, harp on the doctors too much about you know, avoiding appointments and medical examinations until it's too late. I'll try, not promising. Well, I'm giving you better better marks on your uh, attitude as a patient, that's for sure. Well, I've taken up enough of your time. Make sure you get some relaxation. Um, try to relieve some stress. I and sir. it is at that point, because I feel it is thematically appropriate... Uh, those of you both on the Arcadia and on the Torchbearer are getting a distress call. And for this, we will actually just kind of look in at the Arcadia Bridge. So, uh, with everyone here, that uh, should be, I think. Yeah, everyone's here that should be. Um, so, the signal, since... Uh, who's at com comms right now? So, hi, Long Reports. Uh, sir... I'm getting a distress call from uh, the USS Minnesota. Uh, it's really garbled. Uh, it's mostly static. Uh, should I play it over the speakers? Proceed. All right. So as said, it is very much distorted. It is very much static. It is kind of like trying to watch a uh, very old VHS for those of you that remember tapes. And if you don't remember tapes, get off my lawn. Uh, I'm only being <laughs> half serious about that. Um, I appreciated the, that. The uh, the point being that uh, without any sort of work on the signal, uh, you're not able to get a coherent sort of data from it. The only thing you're able to tell is that it is coming from the USS Minnesota. Uh, what class of ship is the Minnesota? Uh, so you look it up, or Highland looks it up, and Highland reports, uh, this is a refitted Miranda class, sir. And I'm able to tell you that it's coming from the Setlik system, or nearby, anyway. Uh, I look through the, our current deployment. Uh, which which of my th th the three ships in my command is closest? Uh, right now, technically, the Torchbearer is an hour closer at warp 5. But with warp 9 point whatever... All of you could be there at more or less the same time. Uh, and how long would that take at high warp? A uh, thematically appropriate amount of time that I didn't really stat out because I got tired of trying to figure out actual distances. 
All right. Um, I'm going to... High long, uh, continue monitoring uh, the transmissions, and then I'm going to go to my office and contact uh, Captain Crowley. All right. So you uh, step into your office, and uh, Crowley, uh, at this point, you're like halfway out of the ready room into your bridge, and yeah, you get a call uh, from the rear admiral. Uh, I'll take it on the bridge. All right. So uh, I guess I'll just put your token here, but yeah, you're you're basically seeing each other through a view screen. Admiral, Commander, I believe uh, you already know, but we've received a distress call from the USS Minnesota. The Arcadia will be en route soon at maximum warp. Um, I will leave it to your. Di well, how much? Can I do like some kind of like strategy check to see? You if pulling the Defiant away does too much to our defenses. Sure. And the other thing that if I wasn't, I, I may not have given you enough hints, it's entirely possible for you guys to clear up the signal. It just means that someone of a science inclination has to do a task. Uh, let's say I gave that order before I left. Okay. So if someone wants to roll for high long, or if our new ops personnel uh, on the Arcadia wants to do it, uh, whichever one of you wants to, it's going to be a control science assisted by the Arcadia's communications and science. And the difficulty here is a two. Uh, let's see, I got a computer. It's a garbled signal, so it could be diagnostics as well. Yeah, I oh, would say diagnostics. Um, anything rel uh, relying on uh, sensor readings or communication technology... Uh, I know, Tahan, you still have a focus in it if you really wanted to assist. Uh, I do like that stuff. Yeah, I would have I would have done that myself, maybe, unless someone is better at it than me. Or I would have at least assisted. Yeah, whichever way you want to play it, just let me know. I will assist. Okay. So what you is the do... Arcadia rolling? Uh, the Arcadia is rolling a communications in science. Uh, Rear Admiral, let's have you do a presence in science, and then I just need to know whether or not uh, it is our lovely Zindi uh, Lieutenant Commander that is doing the role, or if it is High Long doing the role. Uh, Zakul will do it. Alright, so Zakul, control and science from you. I literally just need to see one success from you, and you're golden. Alright, so you guys get a momentum, which is important. Actually, no, you guys get two momentum. I can count. Uh, and what you're able to tell, and we'll say for sake of argument, this information is going to be disseminated across the fleet very, very shortly. But the gist of the message is it's a man's voice. At least it sounds like a, a, a male in origin. And it says, uh, Mayday, Mayday, we are under attack. And there's static. Four Jem'Hadar attack ships. Static. Vital information for war, static, must deliver to Starbase 211, more static, please assist, and then the message repeats. Uh, I'm immediately going to check my files as an admiral to see if I can verify um, what we're being told, you know, that the Minnesota has these things. Okay, uh, go ahead and roll me a control and command or reason and command let's do reason command and the difficulty here is a two okay um trying to think if i have any relevant focuses espionage is one of my admiral focuses you could activate your admiral focuses sure okay um yeah if we're on Border Patrol, then I will have uh, espionage as the Admiral focus this session. All right, so in case anyone wasn't sure what that means, uh, that means that everyone from player character to supporting character alike now has the espionage focus for this entire session. Hmm. All right. What if I already have it? Is it double effective? <laughs> uh, it's like taking two five-hour energies. You get ten hours uh -huh. of energy... And you get double the energy for the first five hours. Ooh. It's a heart attack going to happen. Is that mm. how that works? 
Uh, okay, you said difficulty two? Difficulty two. Mm, okay. I do see green. Hey, that's all you need. So, Tahan, you are able to verify that the Minnesota was on some form of intelligence operation, but you don't know more than that, per se. Um, you don't know specifically what personnel are involved, what the actual espionage action was, uh, but you could potentially spend a momentum to ask me that question. Um, yeah, I would like to do that. I'll spend one momentum. All right, so you know that specifically the Minnesota was to pick up an operative uh, fleeing Cardassian space, and that part of their flight path took them through the dmz okay um i assume then breaking off uh these my three ships so, that yeah, leaves I a huge you... hole in our sorry i i, I was thinking oh, that sorry. leaves a huge hole in our defense I mean, yeah, you would you would be able to put together that, you know, if, if you send all three ships, that's going to be a hole. But this is also why we're here. Um, okay. And I'm actually just going to put us back on the bridge. Because if that wasn't bad enough, Hylong says, uh, you're not going to like this, sir. I've got another uh, distress call coming in. Uh, play it. Uh, this time, it's a very clear connection, and uh, you see on screen a uh, rather disheveled-looking uh, human individual. Uh, he looks like he's pretty much living on a prayer and a few cups of coffee. And he says, uh, hello, uh, this is Dr. Jefferson at the Minos Corva colony. Uh, to whom do I have the pleasure of speaking with? This is Rear Admiral Tahan of the USS Arcadia. What's your problem? Well, uh, Admiral, the long and short of it is is that there's a very strange plague or outbreak or, that is occurring on the colony. Uh, it is turning colonists into metal. Into metal? Well, we can't have that. Um, stand by, we'll send assistance. Uh, thank Admiral you. Out. Uh, whatever you can provide is great. And then uh, Long, you know, mm -hmm. cuts, the, cuts the signal and says, Ah... Uh, Sir, apparently someone's either having fun or it just is not a good day. I'm getting another distress call. Play. All right. This time uh, you see what appears to be a humanoid. Uh, he has some sort of dot on his head that's similar to a Rysian's, but it's not quite the same dot. And uh, he says he, he looks very frantic. He, he looks like he is, um, shall we say, extremely anxious. And his body language is that of definite distress. And he says, uh, uh, Starfleet, good. I, I don't know who you are, but th this is Chancellor Moral uh, on Nebron 2. And we have a coup on our hands. They're, the people are literally pulling every single government official out under the street and executing them for suspicion of working with changelings. And we need someone here. We, we need something. We are not equipped to deal with this situation. Understood. <laughs> Is like Crowley like on a second channel, just like listening to all of this? I would say that you guys are getting this information at the same time as the Arcadia. So yes, you are getting the same information. Um, is this a Federation world? This is a Federation world. Um, it is a little bit farther uh, away from the border than everything else, but it is, I would say, within striking distance of the border if the Dominion decided to, you know, actually send ships that way. Understood. All right. Uh, please do the best you can. Uh, we will send assistance if possible and as soon as possible. Admiral out. And then Hylong ends the, the channel. She waits five seconds, sighs, and says, Okay, I think that's all of them, Admiral. Okay. Um, what's the medical staff on the Thunder Child like? So, obviously, you have... Uh, Oh, so the Thunder Child. I, that's right. We we switch names. Uh, the Thunder Child is not exactly equipped for medical sort of 
um, endeavors. In fact, let's just pull up their sheet and take a look. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they've got a whopping. Actually, no, they they have a three in medicine. They had more than I thought they did. Um, I would say that they have a decent uh, medical staff, but it's not like they have advanced sick bays or really anyone designed to take on um, quarantine procedures. If that makes any sense. Yeah. But um, I would say, let's take a look at the Arcadia sheet. It has um, the best. Or sorry, uh, the Torchbearers has the best medicine. Does it? Yeah. How did that right. happen? <laughs> no, the uh, the Torchbearer has a one in medicine. I was like, there's no way. Oh, sorry, sorry, the Thunderchild. Yeah. So the Torchbearer, obviously one in medicine. The Arcadia, two in medicine. The Thunderchild, a three in medicine. So the Thunderchild is technically better equipped for uh medical staff but sort of this is what i was talking about where you have to choose where you're going um whichever task you send the thunder child on i'm going to be doing some roles behind the scenes to determine how uh effective it is it will be something that you send off and they deal with the situation but unless you like send two ships the entire situation will be determined on those roles, and it could go either way. Um, well, I have a question. Uh, what, a doctor, what's Dr. Brin's character on the Torchbearer? Mox. What role is that? Are you talking about what character I'm playing on the Torchbearer? Yeah. Uh, I'm security chief, uh, tactical. Okay. Mox, the Saurian. Okay. Um... Admiral Tahan to Doctor Bryn. Bryn here. I would like to. I would like you to take a shuttle and meet with the Thunder uh, the Thunder Child. Uh, there is a plague. I'm sending you the information now. Understood. All right, <sighs> Commander. Or uh, sorry, Captain Crowley. Yes, Captain Admiral. All right. Uh, we we need to. We need to intercept the USS Minnesota, but I'm not comfortable leaving the situation on... What was the name of the planet? Uh, if you're referring to the one with the riots, uh, Niburon 2. Okay. Uh, we will be sending the saucer section with the security team to Niburon 2. The drive section... Oh, wait, can the saucer section warp on its own? Nope. Nope. Okay. That will have to wait. Um, uh, Admiral? Yes? Do you have the Roddenberry? They need ground forces. They can crew 10. Uh, uh, that's all you're going to get. Do we, do we have any information on how much support they need? Well, based on the frantic nature of the call, you could probably tell by the fact that they are dragging officials into the street and executing them that 10 people, even with phaser rifles, are probably going to have a hard time stopping the riots. And what's the security complement on the torchbearer like? So, uh, if I remember correctly, the Defiant crew is about 54, whereas the Thunderchild as an Akira is something like 300? Let me look it up. I believe the most most crew is going to be the Arcadia. Yeah, the Ar the Arcadia is definitely going to have the most because the Arcadia has over a thousand. Uh, okay, so the uh, the Arcira class has five hundred crew. Okay. Um. All right, I have a change in orders. Doctor Bryn will be going to the uh, the planet with the plague. Um by himself with the medical team, and I'll send the Thunder Child um, to the, the plant with the riots. Okay, just so you know, uh, Shuttlecraft are not going to get them there any quicker. Uh, I think the maximum warp is going to be limited to five or six. Uh, you could send uh, Bryn in the Roddenberry, but again, you run into the problem of there's no quarantine measures to be taken on the Roddenberry. Whereas if you send an actual ship, there are many different ways you can maintain a quarantine. Right. I have a proposition, Captain. 
Please. Arcadia goes to the planet of the right, detach the saucer, separation, have it stay in orbit, and then bring the prime the drive hull back. What would the time be like to do all that? So the time to do all that, in fact, let me actually put us did I put a map in here? No, of course I didn't. So let me just draw on theater of the mind. So let's assume that the Arcadia will be, say, this blue X here. All right, so that's that's the Arcadia. Uh, the Setlick, the Minnesota. So the Minnesota's over here. That's the purple. And we'll say the red is the Riots. And then we'll say Minos Corva will be yellow. So we'll put yellow here. Um, so the travel time between, say, purple and yellow is maybe a few hours or depending on how fast you want to go like if you want to push the engines you could get there within 30 minutes but to go from say blue to red or red to purple uh you're looking at at least a few hours if not uh close to a day unless you really push the engines okay the defiant will go uh, to the uh, minnesota immediately the Arcadia will go to the planet with the riots, detach, and then uh, meet with the Defiant, uh, the, tor the Torchbearer, and the Thunder Child will take Dr. Brynn to the planet with the plague, and that's the Red X, right? Uh, the planet with the plague is the yellow. Oh. Okay, Thunder Child to riots, um, uh, Arcadia to plague, and then okay. detach. And let me just quickly throw tokens on here so that we have it for reference. All right, so Thunder Child's over here. Uh, let's see, the... Oh, it might help if I uh, properly did it. All right, so Thunder Child's there. Uh, Torchbearer going for the Minnesota. And then the Arcadia is going for the Medical Outbreak. Do I have everyone where they want to be? Uh, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Unless I have any further suggestions. Uh, before the Defiant departs, or the Torchbearer departs, uh, we're dropping a warp-capable uh, probe. Yes, all three ships need to do that. And uh, we're working our probe to uh, start screaming like a battle of hell the moment a Dominion ship comes near it. Yeah, uh, in fact, let's leave a trail of probes on our way to our destinations. All right. So uh, we sort of see a, an exterior view of uh, the ships splitting off to their different directions. And I mostly leave it up to you. Which scene would you like to handle first? Uh, with the Arcadia going to the plague or with the Thunder Child, or not the Thunder Child, the Torchbearer uh, handling the Minnesota? I'm getting so confused with all the ship names and right. names on each yeah, ship and everything. Need a freaking diagram um, for this. My, my vote's for the Torchbearer. I like that. Okay. So, um, oh, go ahead. I will just say uh, all hands, prepare for red alert and battle stations. All right. So, uh, we'll say, well, how fast do you want to go? Do you want to push your engines? Do you want to go at, like, warp 7? Uh, we're going to push the engines. All right. You'll be there within 30 minutes, then. Which means you will not have had time to rest, and I'm going to say that that will mean your complication range, Crowley, is going to be uh, a 17 to 20 on any tasks you perform. Yeah. But to uh, set the scene when you arrive, and let me fix it for the stream, uh, hmm, I should probably change background color if we're going to use Jem'Hadar, because you cannot see them for anything. Um, as you arrive... Uh, you realize that the situation is pretty bad for the Minnesota. Um, there are four attack ships in the area, and strangely, they seem to be sort of savoring the kill. It really wouldn't take but a concentrated barrage to take out the Minnesota at this point. Uh, by that I mean there are multiple hull breaches that pierce the entire saucer section, the port nacelle is leaking, and in general, it just does not look like this ship is much longer for the world. Um, so this is kind of where you drop out of warp. 
And let me just very quickly change the star map here because you cannot see the Dominion ships for anything. Uh, let's see. Let's try... Do I've I invented have... cloaking technology. I have a red map. All right. So let's put you down, resize fit. There we go. That's that's a little bit better. You can now see the ships. All right. So uh, we are going to start starship combat. And you guys will get the first action. Uh, so let's see. There are six of you. So I will give the Thunderchild six turns. And I will give everything else uh, its own three turns based on its scale. So that, uh, that. So during wartime, our general order is to not do Diplo, especially with Gem Hadar. So I'm not going to open Haven's frequencies to them. Yeah, I didn't think you would. I'm just going to say Quantum Torpedoes on the closest uh, Gem Hadar. All right. That's my, that's my action. That's my captain. All right, so uh, let's check some ranges here. I think you're you're fine, but let's double check. Uh, you could hit C, yes, and they would be at long range. Uh, just so you, uh, it's been a while. Uh, remember that firing torpedoes is a threat causing action. So I would get one threat for you firing torpedoes. Should I go ahead and do it? Yep. <laughs> All right, fire so away. Uh, it is a control and security for whoever is the tactical officer in charge. The ship is assisting with weapons and security, and torpedoes are a difficulty three. Uh, a moment. Does, does shipboard tactical have anything to do with this as a focus? Oh, yeah, not? like that's pretty much everything you do. Ooh. Okay, uh, so good news. You did manage to succeed. Bad news, there is a complication. Uh, you can either give me two threat, or I'm going to make it a complication. Um, what does bold security do again? So if you have uh, bot dice with threat, you could That's reroll right. one. Okay. okay um... What do you guys think? It, it seems like almost a bad situation either way. Because a complication could be pretty bad here, but giving him more threat with four Jem'Hadar ships could also be bad. Yeah, because we already gave him one threat by firing the torpedo to begin with. Could use determination. Well, a complication is what? Usually worth two momentum slash threat? Yep. So it seems like we're giving him one less by doing it that way. Okay. We'll do that. I also have a talent of Deadeye Marksman that I have no idea what it does. Hmm, might be something in operations. Let's take a look. Because that, that could matter here. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Operations, where are you? I have it up, actually. Cool, what page is that? Um, it's on 47 in the PDF. Okay. Uh, you sure it's 47? Uh, 43. Book page 43, my bad. Ah, okay. Alright, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da, Dead Eye Marks, oh. when the characters spent their time at the target range every day when working on their aim. Okay, yeah, so if you were able to take the aim minor action, this would apply, but because quantums have the calibration, you have to spend your minor calibrating them. Okay, got it. Okay, what did we decide on doing, guys? I think Even... we're just... Go ahead. I think we're doing the one momentum, one threat. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, for Quantums, I believe your challenge dice you're rolling here are eight challenge die, and you have Vicious One on this. All right. So, uh, that will be doing a grand total of 11 damage. Uh, do you want to give me threat for rerolling those two zeros, uh, rerolling uh, or adding penetration to anything, or are we just going to take this attack as is? I'm leery about giving you more threat. Yeah, let's say let's take the damage as is. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that's going to just be a grand total of eight damage to the uh, Jem'Hadar attack ship C. And because it is high yield, you actually cause two breaches. And if I remember Starship uh, NPC rules properly, that means that the Starship loses two turns. So yeah, the uh, Quantums, you aim carefully, you fire out the Quantums. They streak and collide into the Jem'Hadar attack ship, knocking it off balance, uh, so to speak, and otherwise uh, rendering it inoperable for a moment in time. So that's your tactical action. Uh, up Whoa. first is going to be uh, Jem'Hadar attack ship A. Uh, attack ship A is going to... Let's check ranges okay. here. Just one thing, do we have quick action? Ah, that's a good question. Do you have quick action? And also, that was the command task, because I ordered him to do that. Does that change? Uh, unless you assisted him, no, that doesn't count as your command. Okay. Let's see. All right, yeah, I can go pretty close here. All right, so attack ship A looks like it's doing a sweeping run on the Minnesota. However, instead, it kind of comes to the aid of attack ship C, and it fires its own torpedoes at you. So let's see how those do. Uh, well, good news for you guys is that uh, the torpedoes just sail harmlessly by. You are completely fine. And it is your turn again. Uh, okay, as a captain, how is, like, I can do direct task, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to direct... Uh, I don't know who is our helm. That's Jero Los, me. Okay. <laughs> uh, evasive action to close the distance. All right. Um, so to do that, I'm going to need to take two actions. Why two? Um. Oh, it just. Uh, uh, well, he wants me to move and do evasive action, right? Well, yeah. If you move and evasive action, that is two turns. But if you just evasive or just move, that is a single task. Okay. Right. Um. Do, 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 do. Los does not yet have a bunch of great talents for this. So, what I'm going to do then is. I'm going to see if I can generate some momentum for the to keep the initiative to do that or how how many how much momentum is it to take a second action? It is two momentum to take another action and it would be at an increased difficulty of 1 if I recall correctly. Okay. All right, then can I do the um he wants me to close the distance. So how far away are we from number D? So uh, D would be this one at the bottom. Uh, well, let's break up the ruler. Uh, it looks like you are nine units away, which is long range. And it's eight from C. Run that by me again. And we're eight units away from C. Yeah. And okay. then 9 from A, and then 11 from B. All right. well, since C and A haven't moved yet, I'm going to bring this over to that side. Okay. Um, and so I'll, I'd like to do a task for, let's see, medium range? Medium um, range would be 6. How much power would be? You have full power at the moment. Full power. I'll spend 1 power to move us anywhere within long range. Okay. Uh, so you, I'll move us. Let's see. You're still rolling a control con, and the torchbearer is assisting with engines con, but it's a difficulty zero, so it's a momentum generator. All right. There's one success. And I see green. Very nice. So, yeah, you get a grand total of four momentum as you move within uh, six squares or six hexes. Okay. Can we end up being... Oh, well, that I, that was long range since we spent power. Right. So I want to end up in hex... Is it in seven? The one on the opposite side of A from C? Uh, ping it for me. Right. 
I'm not... uh, the one the one to the the upper right hex of C. All right, hold on. Let me let me see if I can... E seven. E seven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, you're fine. Let me see if I can uh, make it a little bit more legible. Nope, that made it worse. Uh, let's try that. There we go. That more uh, that more visible. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you want to be at E seven. Absolutely. All right. So you fly on up there. Okay. And there's your and home action. I'll, yeah, and then I'll spend two momentum to keep to take a second action. Okay. And do evasive at an increased difficulty. All right. So that is going to be uh, daring and con for you at a difficulty of two, and that is assisted by the ship's structure and con. And that means that until Los's next turn, all attacks made against the ship and all attacks made by the ship increase in difficulty by one. And this also has a power requirement of one. Quick okay. question. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Improved reaction control system. Yes. Are moving or maneuvering? Because uh, it reduces the difficulty by one. No, that was impulse. Okay. Unless, well, I mean, because maneuver is like in action. I, I I say in quotes, and then impulse is another action. Uh, let's let's double check. You never know. All right. So the wording on improved, uh, where is it? Improved reaction control, maneuvers precision, blah 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 blah. Whatever attacks, blah, 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 move or maneuver the ship. Uh, okay. So here's the key thing. Uh, is if it would increase in difficulty because of obstacles or hazards, you would reduce the difficulty by one, which is okay. not the case here. Battle's a hazard. <laughs> nah. All right. Uh, are y'all cool if I spend one momentum for a third die here? Sure. Sure. Uh, you should be at three momentum overall, by the way, after that spend. Well, I thought we were at four, then I had to spend two to take the Oh, action. yeah, 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 you're right, sorry. All right, well, no help from the Torchbearer. But three successes from Los, so you guys get a momentum back. And yeah, uh, I'm just going to put the, uh, let's see, let's put put that on you to symbolize that you are evasive all righty so uh los you sort of dip and weave and bob the ship to keep it unpredictable and up next uh is going to be attack ship b and attack ship b is actually just going to try and fire at you from uh its current range so let's see how well it does there let's see all right so it will suffer a complication, but it will be hitting you with its Polaron Bank, which deals, uh, let's see, that is one, two, three effects, so piercing six. Uh, you don't have more than six resistance. You have like five, I think, yeah? Yeah. All right, yeah. so yeah, you're going out. to be taking the full brunt of six damage, and I get to roll on the uh, the breach table. So let's see what we got. Six, I believe that is engines, but let's double check. Yes, oh, my engines. It is engines. So immediately, you guys lose one power. No, you lose two power. And until someone performs the restore minor action, all ships or all tasks that use the engines or have power requirements uh, increase in difficulty by one. And you guys do still suffer the six to shields, and you do are are considered having one breach. So yeah, uh, you know, narratively, Tax Ship B lines up its shot, and a piercing purple beam uh, impacts the Thunder Child's shields and causes a buckle in the shield array, and the beam uh, hits your engines and temporarily destabilizes them. And then I'm going to spend some threat here so that uh, attack ship C can go. And attack ship C is going to do the exact same, or not C, uh, D. And D is going to do the exact same thing. It's going to shoot at you with its Polaron beam. And it will. It will Ooh. indeed. And that's a problem because that is 11 damage. Uh, good news, no piercing. But 
you would still take six damage from that if I can math properly. So what are your shields at after taking six? Uh, gone. Okay, so that means you get two breaches here. All right, let's let's see where let's I see where the breach is. I think we're destroyed because we're at three breaches. Mm, that's for NPC yeah. ships. Yeah, uh, yeah it's NPC. You guys, as player ships, don't die unless you um, actually start getting destroyed stuff. So you can still stay in the fight. It's just NPC ships die when they take scale breaches. Um, all right, so let's see a seventeen. Uh, how the other one got six on us when we have five resistance? Should we have only taken one? I mean, it did eleven damage. No, the first attack though. It had piercing too. If you mouse over it, the effects. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the first breach is going to be to structure, and that means I get to roll a challenge die, and if uh, I roll an effect, then a random character, one of you all, uh, will be lethally injured. So let's see what happens. Well, good news. No lethal injuries. Uh, however, because there are two breaches, one for the hit and one for your shields going down, an eight. So keep track of this, someone, please. Uh, you have one breach to structure. You have one breach to engines. And your next breach is going to be to sensors. So for sensors, you guys are... Let's see. Uh, all attacks made by the ship increase in difficulty by one until a restore minor action is used on the sensors. So, in general, you're not doing well. Uh, but it is your turn again. Do we have an engineer on the bridge? If not, you've got one in engineering. We got Gondak. Yeah, yeah, Gondak, start doing what you can or we explode. Uh, yes, Captain, what would you like me to repair? Oh, engines. Very well, sir. I'll get my people on it. All right, so the and... good news is that uh, the restore minor action, don't have to roll for it. You just immediately restore engines. Um, so you, the, the difficulty and complication range increase goes away. Uh, but for your actual action, if you want to say send repair team somewhere or do work yourself to repair a different breach, uh, that is a task. That's up to the captain. I have repair teams. My guy's, uh, pretty stacked. Uh, yeah, let's get the structure repaired done. Okay. Not uh... sensors. Because remember, oh. sensors, at this point, because you are evading, and because you are, um, your sensors were hit, you're at a plus two difficulty for all weapon attacks made by you guys. All right, let's do sensors done. All right. So, yes, sir. So, uh, Gunlok, if you can roll me a presence engineering, and if you could make that at a difficulty of two, please. Oh, I'm sorry, I was pulling up the ops book. Say it again. Uh, you are doing a presence engineering, and you are at a difficulty of two. Engineering. Hold on real quick, let me see. Uh, I'm doing sensor. I have, elect uh, would it be like the sensor's power systems, or the computers that are having the issue? Ah, uh, the power systems for sure. Oh, well, I have electroplasma power systems. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, excellent. So, submit. Click on focus. Yes. And let me pull up my page 52. I'm not missing something. So, yeah, unless you have a talent or something that helps you out here, you're unable to get the sensors operational again. Uh, you are trained to direct and lead damage repair parties during emergencies, giving them guidance and expert knowledge of the ship systems. You succeed at a damage control task. Ow. Oh, I guess I did not succeed. Yeah, you, uh, you did not quite succeed. Well, let me take that back. Um, you are technically in engineering, 
So I was about to say, this I would, would be at a decrease. So yeah, she would pass on a one. Um, okay. Uh, for repair team leader, it says if you succeed at the con damage control task, you may spend. Oh, spend. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, don't you have could three. spend three momentum or spend three threat to get rid of another breach, but it's entirely up to you. Okay. Well, that's a. I mean, that's a captain's choice here. If we spend three momentum to also repair one breach, so this this action is to negate it, but it's not actually repair. This is actually going to repair the breach if we spend a three momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, it negates the effect that the breach still exists. This here, the breach is repaired. So, that's a captain call. Yeah, let's spend the threat. All right, so that'll be two momentum and one threat. I don't know. If, I thought we were doing a three threat. Oh, I mean, if you want to give me three threat, I'll take that too. Uh, did our sensors pick up where the Cardassian life sign was on before we got pushed in? Uh, no, you have not run a sensor scan of this area yet. All right. Yeah, let's do the two momentum and then one threat. All right, noted. So which breach are you getting rid of? Uh, he asked for sensors, so we're going to well, negate the sen... Oh, sorry. No, no, I was going to say, so the breach itself um, doesn't have to be the same thing you're repairing. Uh, structure. Okay, there we go. Repair the structure then. All right. I'll erase that. So all of your negatives from the breaches are gone. Your structure breach has been secured, so the only breaches you have at the moment are to engines and sensors. Very good. All right. And now uh, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to get on your turn uh, before we switch to the Arcadia to see what's going on with the Arcadia. Uh, you get an incoming call from the Minnesota. It is a tight bam, uh, literally directed laser communication so that only you can hear this. All right, put it on. All right, so on screen, you see a another garbled, static transmission, but this time you see that it is a Cardassian. And he says, My name is Agent Zazir. The situation here on the Minnesota is bad, and if I'm reading this properly, you guys aren't doing all that well either. I, by Starfleet Executive Order 6671, I am hereby ordering you to beam me to your ship and proceed to Starbase 211 at maximum warp. And before you can reply, and to give you time to think that over, let's cut to the Arcadia. So, uh, at this point, the Arcadia has arrived at Minos Corva. And with you guys in orbit of Minos Corva, Heilung reports... Uh, sir, uh, the satellite network surrounding the planet is broadcasting a planet-wide quarantine warning. Uh, apparently, in the time it took us to get here, the plague has spread across the entire planet. Shall I try to raise Dr. Jefferson again? No, Dr. Bryn will do that. Um, yes, do it now. Okay. Should I just have Bryn on the bridge? Yeah, Bryn on the bridge is probably the best call here for this. So let me just Bryn hop your token on, on in. There you go. So yeah. Uh, so since Bryn's on the bridge, Hylong puts it on the main viewer. And what you immediately notice uh, between when you saw him last and now, uh, Dr. Jefferson now has a very shiny metal right arm from when you saw him last. And he says, ah, I was wondering if you were going to come at all. Uh, it's, it's good to see you, Arcadia. I wish it were under better circumstances, but we are always happy to help. I will be leaving uh, my doctor, Lieutenant Commander Bryn here, and his medical team uh, to help you with the situation. Is there any additional information that we need to know? Well, uh, what information we do have is limited. We have not been able to figure out the infection vector, and that means we have no idea how this is spreading. And in addition, the symptoms are varying between those that are infected. Some, like me, and he holds up his arm, uh, some, like me, our extremities turn to metal and then it spreads from there, while others have had their entire internal organ structure changed. Hmm. Well, I guess I better get down to the planet's surface 
Captain, or Admiral. And Jefferson hearing this says, "Ah, just so you know, we are not going to be breaking quarantine here unless you tell us otherwise. Which means if he comes down, he stays here until the plague is gone. Understood. Um, Pause pause, uh, communication. Uh, Doctor, do you do you need the resources of the saucer section, or do you want to take the away team down with you? Um, And I mean, what are you? What are your plans with the saucer section? If I don't need you, we're going to try to rescue the Minnesota. All right, we're going to need all the firepower we can get. All right. Well, I'll I'll take my team down to the surface then. All right. Uh, is there? Would it help you to have the saucer sub- section? I mean, sure, it would help. But and that is where sick bay is. Right. No, there there are enough lives here that you need those resources. Um, okay. Well, then I, leave the saucer section if you can. All right. I will. Um, We'll have someone take over, but the rest of the crew, uh, we're going to go to the little... There's there there's a turbo lift that only goes between this bridge and the battle bridge. Mm-hmm. And we're going to go to the battle bridge and separate. Uh, Janice, I believe you know how. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks for that uh, promotion, sir, to tactical officer. And, <laughs> and then we start gathering... And head down down towards the uh, battle bridge. All right. Um, uh, Rear Admiral Tahan to USS Arcadia. We will be se- so- separating the saucer. I need all security. Um, your section uh, department heads will have your assignments for which section you need to be in. We will be separating in two minutes. So as people run back and forth, uh, I do think there is an actual task involved here. Let's see. All right. So uh, you need to roll me a... Yeah, this is going to be a Janus thing. Uh, Janus, you're going to be rolling a control and con. And the ship is assisting you with structure engineering. And you need to do this at a difficulty of three. And this exceeds a cost. So... Let's just say that you want to see three successes here. Otherwise, bad things might happen. So as a control and con. Yes. And I also have shipboard tactical systems. Would this fault classify under shipboard tactical since we're going tactical? I think it would, yeah. Nice. Whoa, look at me. Oh, oh, I'm that, rolling. that is a complication from the Arcadia. Uh, ship, why have you failed me? Dice, why have you failed me? Oh, Jesus. Boom! Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, that means you get a momentum. So Spare the paint. Here is the question. Do you <laughs> want to give me two threat, a threat and a momentum, or do you want to take the complication? I, I'd s- My vote is for like threat and momentum because a complication here could probably not be good at all. So, <laughs> Well, it's the first time it's happening, so I'd say take the complication. That's just me. I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> complication. We can fix it on the on yeah. the way. That's what I was thinking too. All right. So then, yes, what's going to happen is the uh, the complication is you guys are going to suffer one breach to structure uh, because this is the first time it has been used and something just isn't right. Something is not decoupling properly. So across the ship, power conduits will explode. Uh, holes in the there will be a, a hole teared in the hull, but let's let me roll the challenge die see if anyone's affected. I did not roll an effect, so you're all fine. But just keep in mind that the uh, engineering secondary hull does have a breach to structure. It's a secondary hull, so yeah. Bren's just looking at the viewfinder like idiots. <laughs> I can fix that. I can think of looking up with information and he's just fuming. They used self sealing stem bolts. So Bryn's yelling, Damn you, Janice! <laughs> As you warp away, <laughs> Janice! Alright. 
So uh, we are going to then explore a little bit more into Bryn uh, before we cut back to the battlefield. So Bryn, uh, you would be the commanding officer here on the saucer <laughs> section. Yes! Oh. <laughs> so how would you like to proceed? Um, I am going to have, before I send anybody down to the surface, I want uh, a doctor. What was his name? Uh, Dr. Uh, Jefferson. Down on the surface? Yeah, I have Dr. Jefferson send up all data that they have on uh, this contagion that they have going on. Um, okay. And I want to put everybody that we can on just pouring over the data first. Okay. Uh, would you also be involved in looking at the data, or are you mainly relying on your underlings to do it for you? No, I'd be looking as well. All right. Then you are going to be rolling an insight medicine at a difficulty of three. And the ship will assist you with, let's say, computers and medicine. And um, do I have any focuses on that? Uh, do you have? Well, let's let's take a look. Uh, let's see, uh, Bryn, Bryn, Bryn. There's Bryn. Uh, yeah, you've got virology, so that would most definitely okay. apply here. I'm tempted to spend a momentum, but I'm afraid you guys are going to need it for the battle, so I won't do that. Oh, no. Yeah, so, Bryn, you're kind of in the same situation that Jefferson is in himself. Uh, there's just not data here. I mean, it definitely looks like Jefferson has checked the most obvious things, like he's checked for airborne contagions, he's checked for water table uh, infections... He's checked basically all the normal areas or ways a plague spreads. And there's no indication that anything is is uh, causing this infection. If anything, looking at it, it's just sort of like a spontaneous sort of process that occurs. Hmm. Are there any, uh, is there any sort of strange radiation going on on the surface, or? Uh, you would have to have someone run a sensor scan for that. And who do I have on board that is well, trained that's, to do that? Well, that's kind of my question. Would you guys have left Highlong with Bryn, or would you have taken Highlong with you in the secondary hall? Secondary hall. Okay. So I would um, say then that. Oh, oh go ahead. Uh, Denja would have actually stayed on the saucer section if she wasn't ordered to go to the secondary hall. There you go. Densho can do it for you. All right. So uh, Densho, you're going to be rolling. Well, what are you looking for in particular? Let me ask that. So are you looking for radiation? Are you looking for something else? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, kind of similar to. What was the planet we were on when there was, like, the rapidly aging plague or something of the sort? Mm. That was Torvis 3, 4. Sounds right. Right. Uh, similar to Torvis 4, I want to see if maybe there's some kind of, like, maybe some kind of spatial phenomena that would be causing this, or that would be the way that Densto would look at it. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me a Reason Science. The ship is assisting with sensor science, and the difficulty here is a three. And that What's is the ship after helping? accounting for your advanced sensor suites before anyone asks. I'm sorry, what did you say the ship was helping with? Sensor science. Well, uh, good news, bad news. Bad news, you're not detecting anything out of the ordinary. But good news, you're pretty damn sure that there's, say, no random abandoned Constitution classes beating <laughs> a signal towards the planet. That is definitely good news. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of at a loss right now. All right. Well, with uh, you at a loss, let's cut back to the I Torchbearer. I have one theory I want to test really quick. Oh yeah, sure, go for it. If I may. Um, would there be any way to look in past Starfleet databases to see if there is a plague similar to this in Starfleet's history that's been recorded? 
Yeah, uh, that would be a, I would think, an insight medicine assisted by computer medicine from the ship, and the difficulty would be a two. Basically, you're doing the data thing that data does. They're like, data, go look up X, and data goes to look up X. Right. Um, maybe xenoanthropology is a focus here? Uh, it's a stretch, but I'll let it happen for reasons. And you said it was computer, ships, computers, plus what? Medicine. All right. Well, there's one success. Uh, Insight Medicine from Densho, two success. So that's a momentum for you guys. Uh, more good news, bad news. Bad news, you are not seeing anything similar to uh, the current infection. But the good news, it's not Borg. So you got that going for you. Right. Oh, jeez. And yeah. What, what kind of, uh, in the information that they're sending away, what kind of metal is it that they're turning into? And what is the final um, kind of, is it killing? I mean, I'm assuming it's killing them once it's completely taken over their body. Yeah, once they are completely metal, they die. Um, yeah. Well, really, once either their heart or their brain is consumed, they are gone. Like, they, they either have brain death or they suffer a heart attack, something that kills them. Um, but the metal that they are turning into is a chromium alloy. Hmm, okay. I don't know if that helps at all. I mean, I'm mostly uh, just medicine babble, but... Yeah, it might give you something to to research. But yeah, to uh, give you time to think, we're going to cut back yeah. to uh, the torchbearer. And uh, at this point, you guys have just received your order to uh, rescue the agent. Uh, whether or not Crowley decides to follow that is entirely up to him. But before that happens, uh, attack ship C is actually going to move. And attack ship C is at point blank range, going to fire its cannons at you. So you are evasive, so this is at a difficulty three. But let's see what happens. Didn't um, attack ship C lose a couple of rounds? It did. Or... Yes, this is its only it's action that? this okay. this turn. Yeah. Uh, okay. The good news is that it fails. It it just fails so completely that its uh, its cannons are rendered inoperable. Um. But it is now the Thunder Child's turn to act. Okay. Hmm. Too much. Time. And our shield down. The Minnesota shield down. Yep. Uh. What would it be to beam him out? Was that an so action? So to beam him out is a hmm. transporter's task, which I have here. Hmm. Uh, that would be a power requirement of one. And you need to be within close range, otherwise it's increased difficulty. And the base task is control engineering at difficulty 2, assisted by the ship's sensors engineering. And it's plus 1 difficulty if it's not on a pad, uh, plus 1 if the destination is not a pad, and then plus 1 if, or plus 1 for each uh, range that you're out of. So right now you're at medium. So that would be at a grand total of three uh, difficulty, assuming the agent is on a pad and you beam him to a pad. Um, and that's a, that's, a, that's a standard action, though. I, Correct. I, w I will note that, oh, the Thunder Child does not have advanced sensors. Nope. Never mind, Tor Torchbearer. Yeah, let me change uh... that. That's what's tripping me up, is the token says Thunder Child. I forgot to fix that. Let, let's fix that now. Torchbearer. Alright, there we go. That's fixed. Yeah, I feel it's beam out. Okay. You I can I can roll that up. Right. Most looks over his shoulder but doesn't say anything. Oh. It's an engineering test, so Well, it could be done by by anyone, really. It could either be done by... Uh, well, let me say this. If it is Janice's character doing it, because he has already acted, that's another plus one. 
If it's oh. a character that has not acted already, it is a difficulty three. Uh, let's get our science officer to do it. Mm. What were the? It was control and engineering, or correct? How's your engineering? <laughs> Two. Oh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm an eleven control though. Uh. I mean, that's not horrible. I believe in Lieutenant Weber. I believe in Lieutenant Weber. <laughs> let's see if the dice do. Yeah. Uh, I, can I spend a momentum? Uh, sure. And uh, sensors engineering mm. from the ship? Correct. Right. And yeah, uh, Dante's, you're rolling me uh, three dice here. And uh, computers or quantum mechanics? Uh, technically... Transporters are quantum bullshit, so yeah, why not quantum mechanics? Well, uh, I need to see if the ship succeeds here. Yep. Rolled it right now. All right. What so, what talents do you have there, uh, Weber? See, collaboration. I have cautious science. Testing a theory. Spirit of discovery. Yeah, none of that's going to help you get rid of that complication. Uh, whenever you attempt a task with science... Oh, yeah, because we didn't do science. Right. So, here's the complication. Because uh, I'm not going to let you spend threat for this one. The I complication is that you do uh, manage to rescue the agent, uh, Agent Zazir... The complication is that based on the damage you've already taken, instead of requiring one power, it requires a total of three power to do so. Okay, we're down to three. But you have him. Uh, the transporter chief reports that he has the agent and that you guys can bug out at any time. Uh, but out of character... I will simply state that the Minnesota, being a Miranda class, has over 250 personnel aboard. Oh, I know. I'm using my determination. All right. What are you using it for? An extra turn. Okay. I am taking tactical controls to my little side panel, and I'm firing cannon straight at sea. Okay. So you are going um, to be rolling a weapons and security area control security. The ship is assisting with weapons security. You are at a plus one difficulty because you are evading. The tactical system has been used already, so that's another plus one. So this would be at a difficulty of four. Also using Star Cross. Okay. Because that uh, that doubles your crit range. Yep. Uh, because our security is at a four, does that give us two tactical stations oh you know what you're right if you have a four that means you have two tacticals so yes uh, it is only a difficulty three okay and i'm using the last dice momentum sorry for a third dice and i want to use my advantage uh since crowley has been studying the Jemadar extensively he knows where to shoot okay uh, uh, i will say that uh you can get an additional breach uh if you hit them Okay. And what am I rolling the game for? It's daring and... Uh, control and security. You already got one assist from the ship, so we just need to see uh, two successes from you. And I got three dice to use. Mm-hmm. All right. Look at that. You guys get a momentum. Uh, no, I get more. One's a six and one's a four. Oh. My range is double to star cross. Well, then you get three momentum. And yeah, go ahead and roll me your phaser cannon damage, but also remember that does cost a power, so you're down to two power. That's nine. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I use one for reroll. Okay. And another one for piercing. Okay. You, you get versatile too, also. Yeah, I was going to say, before you spend any momentum, you are using yeah, phasers. Let's see what you get. 
So right, you can spend the two momentum from Versatile on that. Okay, I'll do that then. All right. Good catch, uh, But that's to re-roll. So one, two, three. Good job, number one. All right, so that's, uh, that's a total of 12 damage at the moment. And you still want to do piercing two? Yep. All right, so I think it's just flat two. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, it's just a flat two that it ignores. All right. So that is a total of, I can math today, 11 damage to the attack ship. And yes, it has suffered enough breaches so that, uh, Crowley, when you open fire on attack ship C, uh, your knowledge of where to hit the attack ship and its previous hit, uh, you tear this thing to pieces. It explodes in what might be a satisfying uh, way, but while it is out of the fight, you still have three fighters, and you have all of two power to your name, which is a problem. Now, hmm. I can't use the two momentum to go into the turn? Uh, no, you can only um, use two turns back to back. Okay. It has to be a enemy turn at this point. Which means oh, we got one. Yeah. So which means uh, attack ship B is going to spend its helm action to get to here, and then since you guys have already all gone, uh, that means I get to pretty much just cycle through all these uh, all these lovely gem hadar. So that's attack ship B. Uh, attack ship D is going to go here. Uh, they are attempting to box you in. And then attack ship A is actually going to open fire on you guys at an increased difficulty. So its total difficulty is a 4, which it does not succeed uh -huh. on, which is good for you guys. Uh, so for their remaining turn, uh, attack ship B is going to scan for weakness, which it does not. Uh, attack ship A is going to scan for weakness, which it does. And attack ship D is going to scan for weakness, which it also does. All right, so let me give him a little target or something so I remember. And yeah, we come to a very fresh round of uh, starship combat. And before we actually begin this new round, let us take our five minute five to ten minute break here because i think we need it so yeah uh if you guys could be back before the top of the hour that would be great and just remember uh i do leave the discord open during chats or during break so you know just keep that in mind but yeah uh brb in about 10 minutes guys arcadia right. can do warp 9.995 of pushing engines Nice. I have the get more power talent. Well, I guess if, if it's an engineering task, we can get more power. Oh, it's definitely engineering. Yeah, let's do it! Okay, break. Let's push the Arcadia to 11. <laughs> uh, I know Los was like, why you try to run? No, 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 no. <laughs> We're going sure. to do some he, damage before he, he, has, he hasn't heard you say run yet. So he's he's holding that hope. All right, I'll be back. Oh man, we got two power left. <laughs> it is uh, not looking good. I'll no. say that right now. Oh, nope. <laughs> I did my uh, crisis management twice now, so that's done. My determination's gone. With, uh, I'm gonna look here. Because we get as many actions per round as our size, right? Uh, which would be a three. A three, so we'd only get three actions per round. I think he augmented for, like, one action per crew member, but since I burnt my determination to blow up the shit out of the ship. <laughs> That, uh, that was a good attack, though, you know. I think Starcross is no longer active. I think it's done. 
Correct. I think it's like a once permission thing. Yeah. Once permission for the task. Focus. Yeah. Okay, cool. The joys of war, though. We might have to abandon them. Yeah, I think we very well might have to. Catches. We got so little power, they'd probably be able to catch us, if, depending on what he does. Yeah, we well, only go as fast as we have energy left, right? Yeah, that's the oh, thing. We have two yeah. momentum. Yeah, I so think we it's... could we could do uh, have restore power, and then burn a two minute from two maneuver us out. Well, if if we if we can use our science move for power and engineering for shields, we can stay in the fight. Yeah, well, they they do have vicious uh, piercing two and vicious one on their different weapons. So. Yeah. But we we have plus one evasion until Los goes. Uh, that is true. I don't know, they've been pretty lucky with their hits, though. Yeah. Well, not those last three. Thankfully, because last three would have been just dust. No, 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 no. PC ships are a lot more durable. Like, it, it would take us more than three breaches for a single system. I must have read that page wrong, because I thought the page was like, hey... After you hit like whatever plus your scale plus one, you die. No, no, no. No, it's, it's NPC. Yeah. Are we yeah, talking we, about uh, starship damage? Yeah. When it when it comes down to it, I have the book right. It's basically we pretty much have to lose all. We have to have like major damage to every area before. I mean, the GM can basically roughly make it whatever he wants because there's not like an official rule. Yeah. I make it. But there there no. are two very specific um, breaches that if they happen, you're gone. Uh, the I, first the structure. Well, first is structure. Uh, yep. For you guys, if you have breaches more than the ship's scale, so if you suffer four or more breaches to structure, yep. then the system has been... Or let me, let me read it verbatim here so I'm telling you the right thing. Um then the whole integrity has been massively compromised and you must do pretty much a full rebuild in space dock. And that means your resistance becomes zero. You cannot repair other systems. And the only way you can move is via thrusters. Uh, but it does not destroy the ship. It does not actually um, blow up the ship. You still are technically able to act. However, subsequent hits to structure affect engines, and once you start getting four or more engine breaches, that's when I start rolling for warp yep. core breaches. Yeah, that's that's my that's how I roll, or that's how I play too. If you lose your structure and your engines, then your your ship's pretty much toast. Yeah, because you, I mean, you're just sitting there and you got holes and half your crew's vented. And, but yeah. That's Although we're never, pretty low on power, yeah. That that's what's gonna kick our ass right there. So campaign two next week is what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean if that's I the way the dice with. falls, that's the way the dice falls, but I mean I just kinda wanted to put you guys in a no win scenario. Almost like a, a mini Kobayashi Maru. I don't believe in the no win scenario. I totally believe in the no win scenario. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Maybe the 
the Admiral made contact with the Torchbearer and informed him that they are on their way, so, you know, that might change our decisions. Well, he also Many knew that that was the plan the entire time. Many of the women I dated in the past also believed in the no-win scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is that why they stuck with you so long? Oh god, <laughs> the shade! Oh, that was that was painful. That hurt. You, you kind of so opened much... yourself up for that, friend. Yeah, that was so much shade. The three hundred are fighting within it. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you what, it sounds like we're all here. So let's just go ahead and pick things back up. All righty. So let me kill the music. I was right. dancing. Damn. All right. So, uh, it is a fresh top of the order, and it would be your turn to act next. You still have evasive action. You have two power to your name, no shields. Two of the Jem'Hadar have locked onto you, and basically bad things are about to happen. What would you like to do? Oh, man. <laughs> I want to... Let's restore uh, shields. Okay. Jeez, so, power, uh, whichever, is, whichever anyone thinks is a good one to go with. So restoring shields or power. So power and shields, both tasks would be your internal systems, um, which means uh, engineering. And that would mean you just need to tell me whether your shields are power. Yeah, let's. Well, shields give us a bit of a, a buffer from attacks. But if they drop down again, we just suffer another breach. Correct. So I'd say let's do power then, and that could give us a chance to boogie. Alrighty. Because so, I'm thinking that's what uh, we're going to have to do. For power, uh, it is either a daring or a control plus engineering at difficulty two. And this can succeed at cost, but let's see what you guys roll first before we start worrying about that. Well, that's our engineer's job, right? Yep. So go for it, Janice. I believe in your character. Uh, which would you want me to roll, daring or control? That's up to you. Well, I'm going to go control if, if I have my choice. Oh, yeah. So, and this is power management, so again, this would have a... Oh, and you're uh, in engineering, so that's uh, you're at a difficulty of a one. Nice, nice. Okay, and all right, which is all you need. So base success will get you two power, unless you have a talent that modifies that. Actually, no, it's one power. Yeah, it's one power. Now you can spend momentum as much as you want to get more power, but base is just going to bring you up to power three. Yeah, let's, um, how, do we, we have no idea how far away the Arcadia is, do we? Nope. And in terms of how damaged do we look, how damaged do we feel? Uh, I would say that at this point, uh, damage control teams have their hands full. Uh, if they get another good few hits in, you might start having problems. But you also have to remember that shields are also down, which means they could start beaming over or beaming off people at their will. Yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, uh, just before I move on, are you spending any momentum for power or giving me threat? What's what are you doing? One momentum for power, one momentum, and one threat for turn keeping. Okay. So you go up to four power, and yeah, it is your turn again. What would you like to do? Close. Fall back as fast as you can. Uh oh. 
Did we lose Los? No, I'm just trying to think what he's going to do when he hears that. Ah. Uh, Klein will give Los a look of, like, I don't like this either, but you should probably do what he said. Um, how much power do we have right now? You have four. And the order was fall back as fast as I can? Yep. Get us out of here. Okay. Uh, I'll do it. I will do the warp action and spend five power to go to warp five. You've got four power. I'll spend four power to go to warp four. Alrighty. So, uh, that will temporarily take us out of initiative order. Uh, however, as I sort of paint the scene here, uh, so the torchbearer, uh, let's say you angle, uh, you bank around to the left, uh, you turn around, and you jump to warp, and uh, as you warp away, uh, what happens is the Jem'Hadar strike ship A uh, immediately jumps to warp to follow you. So you guys are down to zero power. Now that's going to cost them, like, what, five or six power? It costs them five power. So okay. they are pursuing you, uh, as is attack ship D. is also going to spend its five power. And the bad news is that because you have warped away, attack ship B is going to turn, soar towards the Minnesota, open up a barrage of uh, cannon fire, and the Minnesota, gone, just explodes and is nothing more than debris. So no more Minnesota. But yeah, uh, I would say you guys have maybe five, ten minutes in-game time before you're back in Starship combat. Oh, yeah, Crow's not going to be too happy, but he's just going to go through the comms. Like, Chief, we store as much power as you can, get shields up as well. All hands prepare for possible boarding action as well. And I'm just going to look to Clown and I was like, where is our guest? Where is he? Uh, at this point, I think he would have made his way to the bridge. And he is dressed as a Cardassian gull would normally be dressed. And he says, Well, this is a fine mess that we find ourselves in. I cut in. him off. I, I deck him. You deck him? Okay. Uh, deck him. Roll me some challenge dice, please. Uh, how many? And whatever your unarmed attack is. All right. I like this captain. I was actually about to do the same thing, but then Crowley did it for me. <laughs> Alright, do you have a mean right hook by chance? No, I'm just going to do like the quick throw. I just get him right in the throat and cut him off from talking. So, I mean, he still stays up and he kind of chokes you. <laughs> well, violence isn't going to get us anywhere, captain. You're going to learn the name of everyone aboard that ship that just perished. You better have been worth it. Worth it? I think the fact that Beta Z will fall unless my information gets its way to Starbase 2 and 1 is more important than the lives of 200 people. Beta Z, do I need to tell you the population there? I'm just going to get real close to him. Like, I'm half Beta Zoid. Then you know how important this is. I want to read him. Okay. Uh, telepath or empath? I never remember. Uh, empath. Uh, you can tell that he is mostly, I, I guess at this point you did kind of punch him in the throat, so he's pissed off uh, as if he wasn't already. And if anything, he thinks that, or at least you get the feeling of he is not saying how bad the situation is. I'm just going to look to Tactical. Like, divert all power from cannons into engines. We're bringing them off. Make a direct course for the Arcadia. Copy. Alright, I will say that that will buy you 
Uh, so normally it would have been just one internal systems task, so you could have restored some power or some shields. By completely disabling your phaser cannons, I will give you guys back three power, but you will still be overtaken by the attack ships in short order. Do I get any rolls to try to get us a couple shields back? You, that's what I said. So you will be able to perform two internal systems tasks. Nice. So let me just uh, give you the three power. Uh, that's shields. Let's give you the power. Wait, All wait, right. wait. We take that too? <laughs> no, you can't have both. Oh. And uh, let's go ahead and let's resolve your uh, your internal uh, systems tasks, and then we'll cut back to Bryn to see if Bryn has any uh, made any headway. Okay. You want one of each, Captain? One for power and one for shields, or two for shields since we got some energy? Let's show up the shields a bit more. So two right. for shields? So, uh, okay. for shields... This is going to be a control engineering at difficulty zero because you're the engineer doing it. And the structure... Oh, no, wait. It goes up by one because your shield's at zero. So it is at a difficulty of one. Uh, so, Janice, you're going to be rolling a control engineering. The torchbearer is going to assist with structure engineering. And if you succeed, you get two points of shields plus two more for every momentum spent. Uh, while that's happening, I'm going to give our science officer an order. Okay. Yes, sir. Get communications up to Arcadia as soon as you can. We're going to try and meet up with them. And see if you can scramble sensors onto enemies. Will do. So we'll handle that in okay. a moment. Let's, uh, let's resolve the uh, internal systems task first. All right, so that's I got a success. You... I need the ship. Yeah, let's see. So we need to see the ship. So if someone could get me a uh, structure engineering from the ship. I can take care of that. Ooh, complication. Well, here's the thing. Uh, you don't want me to have more threat here, so the complication is that instead of it requiring one power to get two shields, it requires two power to get two shields. So you're down to two power, but hey, you have two shields back. And I will inform the captain of this change in our status. So does he still want me to do more shields? Yeah, do more shields. Very well, sir. So that would bring you down to power one, just so you know. And you still have momentum? Uh, you could spend some momentum for two shields per momentum. Yeah, I'd say let's do that. Okay, so how much momentum are you giving me? All of them. All of it. All right, well, that will bring you up to six shields. Down to one power. All right, so that is the internal systems handle. Now... Oh, I, di I didn't roll my for my second one. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. If you... this The other power is mm -hmm. if you do another shields. So you're at two power right now. Oh, okay. So did we want to do it for power as my second roll? Um, yeah, let's do power. Okay. okay. All right, so that's either a daring or control at difficulty one. This will give me a focus because it's power. Mm-hmm. Oh! Yeah, oh, uh, I'm, I'm going to say that uh, you are unable <laughs> to restore any power because... Oh, yeah. what, about, what about the ship? Doesn't matter because you didn't succeed at oh, all. Oh, I didn't succeed. You're right, you're right. Good news, you do not suffer a breach. I was going to say, if I rolled an effect, that was going to be another breach to your engines. Uh, but yeah, you, uh, you're you not doing great here. And let's, at this point, cut back to Bryn, because I'm curious what Bryn would be up to. Mox, I barely knew you. Yeah. 
So, Hi, Bryn, Crowley. Uh, at this point, you have seen every single bit of data that you can see kind of secondhand. At this point, you're either going to have to risk beaming people down, or if you believe that the Arcadia's quarantine systems will be enough to contain this, then you could beam someone up. But just keep in mind, they don't know how this thing spreads, and there is no cure for it at the moment. I'm going to beam myself down. Okay, so my question then becomes, who is the commanding officer of the saucer section? Um, who would be next in command? Well, that's that's kind of the open question here. Um, oh. So, Gunluk, did you stay on Saucer, or did you leave to Secondary Hall? I left to Secondary Hall okay. with Gunluk. So cool went Secondary. Janish, you went Secondary. Dante's, you went Secondary. Uh, honestly, I think Tivna would be in charge. Ensign Mud. <laughs> I Wait. I don't think we we were that desperate yet. <laughs> Is um, Ensign did Ensign Jensen survive? By the way. Oh yeah, he did. Last, he did. Like, okay. He's he's, he's stopped in coming command. into sick bay so much. I mean, he still comes in every once in a while, but you can yeah. tell that his heart rate goes up whenever you point an instrument at him. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll leave. Uh, or would it, yeah, Tivna is, I mean, Tivna works for me, probably a better commanding officer than Bren mm -hmm. at this point. Um, so yeah, he's going to beam down. Um, is there any, I wonder if I could work in an EV suit on the surface. If you want to take an EV suit, I believe it is one momentum to do so. So that would be one threat because you guys have no momentum. Okay, I'm not going to do that then. I am just going to risk it and go ahead and beam on down. All right. Are you beaming just yourself down, or are you bringing people with you? Uh, for now, just myself. Okay. So, Bryn, you beam down uh, into Jefferson's lab, and he comes to meet you, and you can see that he is surprised and maybe a little bit taken aback. And he says, I, he, you've just damned yourself like the rest of us. You know that, right? That's enough of that talk. Well, he, just... you see by this point, like, his entire arm... Uh, is definitely chromium at this point, and it's starting to seep from his shoulder into his chest. I'd like to take a tricorder reading of um, not only where it's been calcified, I guess, for lack of a better word. I know it's not. I mean, it's that metallic. is pretty close to what's going on, though. Yeah, so I'm gonna. I would, I would like to take a tricorder scan of that and of the like whatever the border region of is of the closest to where his skin is turning right into this metallic stuff. Okay. Uh, there's two ways we can go about this. As I said before, we can either make this a high difficulty task and it's a one shot thing, or you spend time and time is obviously a factor here and it would be an extended task in that instance. So it really just comes down to which you would prefer. Hmm. How 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 difficult was it going to be if I just do the one? If the you one do task? it straight, uh, it would be a difficulty four, and we have no momentum. You um, have no momentum. You do have You've got a lot of. Though. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess I'll try that. All right. So this is going to be a reason medicine difficulty four. And I need to know what you're spending resource-wise. I guess I'm going to spend a determination. Okay. Which value? Did we get any of our values back? Because it looks like I have an X by one of my values that's been there for quite a while. Oh, uh, yeah. You'll need to replace that with something then. It would have been enough time passed that that would have been replaced by something else. Um, not everything can be learned from books with that. Sure. Yeah. Practical, okay. practical scanning. Yeah. Now you don't get rid of that value. You just use it. Right. Um, so two free successes is what I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you're still rolling two dice. Do you want to roll any more? How much threat do you have at this point? Or is that not something I can know? Not something you can know. And trust me, you don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing, I have bold medicine. I'm almost tempted to give you one more. 
So at this point, I just need two successes, right? You need two successes, correct? Okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna I'm gonna gamble with it. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, and I have a focus because of virology, right? Yep. Oh. Phew. Yeah, okay. Don't even need. You don't need it. You, you're Bryn. You know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> um. So you get. Did you get momentum. some? That's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but to describe what you're seeing, and we'll say for thematic sake, the reason why your scan is more effective than the ones that Jefferson has run is because you and your background know what to look for. You're looking for very specific things. And sure enough, when you scan the area between where the arm ends or where the metal ends and it starts to seep into the flesh, you're detecting a microbe. And this microbe is actually tachyon-based, which means it is a subspace native microbe that is basically eating organic matter and turning the waste into metal, if that makes any sense. Would Bryn know what would what would cause something like that? Uh, I would say that Bryn has a few ideas. Um, you would know that one of the easiest way to get rid of subspace is to bombard the area with some form of anti-tachyon. Uh, alternatively, you could use Solanogen if you had Solanogen. Um, there's a few ways. Like there, there are known ways to get rid of subspace nasty stuff. And how, how large of an area would we be able to bombard? Uh, if you literally bombarded the surface from the saucer section, you could get maybe uh, a quarter of the planet with each bombardment. Are there any known side effects to doing that? That is the catch. So with that level of bombardment, you would be risking radiation exposure for a good amount of the populace. But conceivably, it might drive the microbe away. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to... I will order a very low level of bombardment on the area that I currently am in so that I can firsthand um, test whether or not that it's having any effect on these microbes. Okay. Uh, someone besides Bryn, I'd like you to roll me a challenge dice, please. Sure. Well, let's have uh, our science officer do it. Or chief. Dante's. Yeah, Dante's, if you want to give me a challenge dice, please. All right, okay. one. No effect. All right, so Bryn, uh, you give in the call to up to the Arcadia, and sure enough, after a moment, uh, the bombardment of your immediate area begins... And as you are looking with your tricorder, I want you to roll me another reason medicine. This time, it's only a difficulty two. Wow. Wow. That's another two momentum. Good job, Bryn. Uh, yeah, you are seeing that the bombardment is more or less shunting the microbe back into subspace. But it's not fixing the fact that the metal is still there. But it conceivably is stopping the spread. So it's not progressing, but it's not regressing at the same time. Correct. Okay. Um, I mean, it's not optimal, but it's going to have to do for now. I'm going to order the to continue with the low-level um, bombardment through just start covering the surface with it and then we'll deal with uh trying to see if we can get go about reverting this process and then checking for any radiation poisoning or anything gotcha and with that we're going to cut back to space combat so uh at this point uh you guys have pretty much been caught by the gem hadar um let me just adjust some tokens here and adjust the overlay so people can see what the hell's going on all right so for you guys you are more or less there uh when you drop out of warp and the arcadia is going to arrive in one round so you have one round to survive before the arcadia secondary hole shows up um so i had one thing klein wanted to do sure. while we were traveling 
Um, he's going to essentially give a pat down to this uh, Cardassian that's on our ship now, mm-hmm. and essentially look for anything that could have like a signal that it could be locked onto, or anything that's a form of communication. Uh, roll me a insight security. Uh, difficulty two, please. Would Mox be there for this since he's chief of security? Yeah, you'd be here. Would I be able to do an assist? You may certainly assist. And what is it again? Uh, insight and security. And did we get any bonus for that espionage thing? Or that was on the other ship, right? Actually, yeah. Well, it is an admiral level talent, so it applies to everything in the fleet. So yeah, you guys have a focus here. Um... Uh, I'm going to do two things here, and you just tell me yes or no, because okay. there's two things. Um, I want to use maybe one of my values, if this would work. Um, think twice before leaping, essentially before letting this Cardassian operative stay here. I'm taking every safe measure I can to make sure that there's nothing here that he can get away with. Okay. And you'd be two auto successes is what I'm getting out of that? Yes. Okay, so that means you would automatically pass the task. You'd still have to roll, but you would pass the task. Okay, yeah, I didn't get any successes there. Yeah, which means that had you not spent that determination, none of that would have happened. So because of your focus, as provided by the Admiral... You do pick up a small transceiver, disabled for the moment, that is stereotypical of Starfleet intelligence, meaning it is an emergency intelligence beacon that they use to signal they are ready for pickup. Okay. Um, I'm just going to throw it on the, basically on the deck and then just destroy it with a phaser. Zazir just kind of looks at you doing this like, well, there was no need for that. And I'm going to do the same thing that Crowley did. I'm just going to, like, backhand him. All right, roll me your unarmed damage. Actually, you know what? Let's make a roll of this. You know, I think at this point, he's not going to definitely get hit again. So roll me a daring security, difficulty one, and let's see how many many successes you get. Would Mox be able to try to intercede himself between the two of them oh yeah if you want to just straight up stop them you certainly can okay i would like to try that okay so mox you step in klein are you still going for the attack yeah okay so what is your response to this mox are you going to block him are you legitimately just going to act as a shield are you going to shoot him with a phaser what what's the play here i'm going to try to block Okay, so what that's going to mean, Klein, is your difficulty is now a two. All right, um, I'm going to use my star cross because hand to hand combat would apply here, mm-hmm. and double my focus range. Okay. And how much momentum do we have? You have four at the moment. Uh, I'll spend one to get a third die. Okay. We're in such a bad spot now. You're burning one of these. It's I'm the so happy I'm engineering. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that is a total of three successes, which I mean, I'm pretty sure he's going to hit. Uh, but let's see. I think uh, it's for, yeah, you hit him. It's so actually four successes for yeah. me because I have uh, from the double focus range. No, oh, well, because one of those was a nine. Then you're going to get two momentum back, and yeah, roll your unarmed damage. All right, so you punch uh, him, even with Mox interceding, but. He's a little bit more hardy than that, and he just takes it, and he says... Can I spend a momentum to re-roll those zeros? You certainly can. Just have to I'm going to. <laughs> Back to where we started. We were better off before. What are you doing? All right, so, so that's a total of uh, six. That's seven. Total of six. Um, so, yeah, you hit him hard enough that he is now Well, I have mean right hook. Oh. So, Yeah then he is now considered lethally injured. Oh, God! No! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. <laughs> Not what I wanted to do at all! Well, this is the state of being that we find ourselves in. 
So, God. yeah, Klein, you deck him so hard that you hear an audible crack as his net s- snaps back and he crumples to the floor. Mox is going to pull, pull his phaser on Klein. On stun. It just, he's not going to fire. He's going to say, you need to step back. Is this all on the bridge? Like, Yeah, <laughs> this is all on the bridge. Everyone on the bridge Crowley's, is seeing this. Crowley's looking at Klein. He's like, stand down. Mox, get him to sick bay now. Klein, what Klein what should I do down. with Klein, sir? Should I put him in the brig? Not for now. After we get rescued, or if we die, then we'll see. All right, I'm gonna take uh, the Cardassian straight to sick bay immediately. Okay, I'm gonna walk up to Klein and just lean against him like. I hit him because I wanted to see if he was a changeling. I did a read on him as well. I can't read changelings. I'm just going to step back away from Klein. I was like, think. And I'll walk back to my chair. All right. So (laughs) this is this is a thing. Uh, All right. So at this point, uh, we are now in initiative order. Uh, You are, as I said, this way on the map with uh, your power and shields as is. The Arcadia A's secondary hull will arrive after one round. Um, So I've been preparing to, like, use sensors to disrupt their targeting of us. Yes. So that is going to be a signals jamming task. Uh, but I just need to know whether you want to do that first or if you want to do something else first. I have him do that first. All right. So this is going to be a control and engineering assisted by the ship's communications and security. And I need to know at what difficulty you want to do this at. It can be a difficulty one, two, or three. But not control science? Not control science. I don't like you guys anymore. <laughs> hey, you did good. You did good last time. You did great. I believe you. I have faith. I'll roll the ship confirm. Yep. Go for it. Uh, so what difficulty do we want to then? Three. <laughs> really? Yeah, let's do it three. Well, I mean, we do have some momentum. Do... Yep. Okay, so I'll use momentum. Uh, astrophysicists for... Focus? Um, I would say if you have anything related to E-War, yes, but otherwise, no, I don't think you have anything. I mean, I have computers and astrophysics, yeah. Uh, nah, even computers would be a stretch. Well, he is interfering with their computers. Nah, it's more like their sensors. Which type oh, of what's the primary, or what's the systems I'm rolling on the ship? Ship is communications and security. And I'm control and engineering. Dice pool three. All right, so you're down to three momentum. No successes, <laughs> which means that uh, nothing happens. You try to jam them, and either uh, the sensor array took, or the communications array took a pretty bad hit when you weren't paying attention. Can or he use the determination to reroll? He could use determination to reroll. So what uh, what does Weber have in terms of values? Uh, through adversity, triumph. Sure, that would apply. You can certainly try a reroll. <laughs> please, please do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still, I mean, par for the course. Okay, so Um, here's what happens. You try to jam the ships, and you think you're doing a good job. You you think that you have successfully been able to jam their long-range sensors. The complication is that in doing so, it is now plus one difficulty, or minus one difficulty, easier to hit you. Because you are basically a broadcasting unit. Got it done, Captain. Uh, two momentum to keep initiative. <laughs> All right. So who's going next? Just book it out of here. <laughs> keep running. Okay. How far are you running? How far everyone else can take us. 
Well, what's you our power? Have, you have two power at the moment. I'm not gonna use both of them, so I'll spend one power to go to warp one in the direction of the Arcadia. Okay, so you can, let's see, the flight controller uses the warp drive to move two or more zones. So you would be able to move uh, up to seven to ten units. Uh, is, isn't there also a way to leave the battlefield with warp? That is what we did originally, but if you want to leave the battlefield completely, uh, you have to give me those two power to do it. Oh, it has to be two? Well, it has to be whatever you're spending to get out of it, but warp one, they're just going to catch you again. Yeah, I'm fine with that. But it buys us a turn? Mm, yeah. Not really. Warp 1 is like baby talk. Like, they can they can easily match that and overtake you within seconds. It would cost them only 2 power. I think. Um... Now, you could use Impulse and move anywhere up to long range, and that would be a power requirement of 1. Yeah... No, I think it makes more sense. I'm going to go to warp 2 and get us get us as close to the Arcadia as possible. All right. So, you lose all power. And that's going to be important here. So, you're at zero power, which means if you do anything that requires any power or if you take a hit to engines again, you will lose shields because you have no power running to them at this point. So, let's say for sake of argument, uh you'll get about here which doesn't look like much, but it, it makes sense in my mind. So you get about there for your turn. And what happens next is the Jem'Hadar ships are, of course, going to spend the requisite amount of power to catch up with you. So that will be both of their helm actions. But they will emerge here. But they have had to spend a good amount of power to keep up with you. So they might be in the same state as you, they might not. They also had a chance to regen power during the chase, so good guess at whether or not, you know, they have problems. But it is now the Torchbearer's turn again. Uh, I can generate power. energy. Yeah. I mean, we're going to need something or we're going to get hosed here. Yeah, do it. Uh, to answer your question, Klein, uh, the reason he was lethally injured was because you did enough, uh, you did more than five, and you did enough to get rid of his stress, and that's two injuries, which automatically makes it a lethal injury. Great. Cool. Cool. Where's my... <laughs> Lost my Is right Klein car. prepared for more dad voice? <laughs> there it is. Sorry, guys, I lost my right bar. I just reloaded real quick. Okay, here we go. It is control. To, uh, engineering. Two. Do you want... Oh, we only have one left. And this I will be a focus. It. You want me to take it? I'll say, I'll say use it for the power. If you right. I'm going to re-roll it. For, oh, okay. That's what you're saying. For repeatable. All right, well, and you then, get another momentum, so you're at two. Okay. So you do have one way. power before you spend any momentum, but uh, are you spending momentum for power? Yeah, that's what it's been both. Okay. So that's three? Yep. So you're up to three power. Very nice. All right. So, uh, are you guys keeping initiative or no? I uh, really can't because we don't have momentum for it. <laughs> All right. So, in that case, attack ship A is going to open fire on you. And will hit you for quite a lot. How many effects is that? 11, 12, 13. So, your shields are gone. Uh, you have resistance 5, so you're going to be taking 8, 
So two breaches. Let's roll those breaches, see what we got. Let's see. So first breach. It's going to be the engines, so you lose another power, and I believe that puts you at two breaches to engines. Yep. Which is which I'll handle in a moment. And then 17, uh, another hit to structure. So let me roll a challenge dice. Oh, did we clear the structure one? Yeah, so you're only at one okay. breach structure now. I've rolled an effect, which is a problem. All right, um, I'm now going to roll a 1d6, and I'm going off of your Discord overlay. So whichever number I roll, your character on the Torchbearer is now going to be lethally injured as a panel bursts out and hits them in the face. Oh, please don't let it be the engineer. This is going to go badly. <laughs> number five. Klein. Uh, well, <laughs> Klein, has, Klein has some karma for you. It <laughs> completely is. I deserve oh, it. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so Klein, you are considered lethally injured by this attack. No um, way, Kyle, I could try and put him all the way. Yeah, you can you can do that on your turn, but we still have things to resolve. Um, so engines, at this point, you are now considered to have damage. Difficulty. So damage engines. Uh, this increases the difficulty of all tasks that involve the ship engines or require power. Increases it by plus two, and that means until repaired, not until restored, until repaired. Furthermore, the ship loses one power at the end of every round until this is repaired, and the difficulty to repair is three. So you immediately go down to two power, and, uh, yeah, you, uh... You're not doing great there. Uh, let's use that to represent your engine breaches. All right. So that's attack ship A. Attack ship D gonna do the exact same thing. Miss, miss, miss. It missed. Good. All right. So we come back around. Uh, Torchbearer, uh, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Well, I had asked if I could, if Kyle could have grabbed Klein out of the way. Uh, you can. Hit himself. Uh, would you be taking him to sickbay or just moving him off to the side? Oh, no, I mean like taking the hit. Oh! Um, I would say no. Based on the sudden nature of this uh, buckle in the wall paneling, this is not something you could have anticipated. Alright. Um... So what, we only have tactical and command Tactical left? and command remain, yes. Mm. And the Arcadia still, at least if she turns out. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we should have two tacticals in command, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you technically can use tactical twice, but the problem is Klein was your other tactical, and he's now lethally injured. And I don't know what we could do tactically anyway. We can't modulate shields because we don't have any shields. I mean, I could fire a weapon, but I don't know if it's worth draining the power for that or not. Well, phase cans are down too. Yeah, you only have yeah, your phaser right. rays and torpedoes. Torpedoes is no, uh, it's close range. Yeah, torpedoes would be at a difficulty four before any effects are applied, and a rays would be at a difficulty of three because you're currently at close range. Oh. Uh... Shit, let's just... It's going to be a repeat action, uh, but moving away. Okay, so it would be at a difficulty of... Uh, well, let me ask this. Are you impulsing? Are you warping? What are you doing? How well, do you go to warp too, but then you have no power again. Well, you also have to remember that uh, it is a difficulty to task to even do it. Uh, let's see. Uh, honestly, I'm up. I'm up for suggestions. Well, well, I've already, I've already gone. Uh, so use a I direct can't action uh, to to get our power up, or and or, possibly fix the engine breach. Or yeah, say repair the engine breach. I would drop down because I can repair, repair, not just 
take away effect. Because you haven't used any of your directs yet, and that's really powerful. Yeah. As I said, I'll direct the engineer to repair the engines. Okay. So, uh, this is going to be a damage control task. Uh, yep. Are you doing it yourself, or are you sending teams? Well, I got repair team leader, which uh, I think that's just a I little thing I looked it up. I think it's just a momentum thing. Oh, and you know what I just realized? We were doing it mm -hmm. wrong. It does not remove the breaches, but it only gets rid of the penalties imposed by damage. So technically you have more breaches. Well, my... I, the oh, no, 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 you're right. Sorry. Repair team leader. Now. I remember now. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Actually repairs the breaches. Right. Sorry. Momentary lapse. Yep. That's no, okay. Okay. So what's my difficulty if I go for, uh, a re uh, for a negate and repair? Uh, it would be a difficulty three, and if okay. you're doing it yourself, if you're doing it yourself, it's a daring engineering. If you're sending teams, it's presence engineering. Okay. Uh, I have a value. It says not everything can be handled behind a console, so that means I'm going to use the value, and I'm going to do it myself because I don't want to be behind a console in this situation. Okay. So go ahead and roll your daring engineering. Crowley, you're assisting with presence command. Daring. Crowley, do you have advisor? Engineering. No, I don't. Okay. And these are... Uh, uh, what part of the engines? Because I have fusion reactors. It's not a warp reactor, but depending on what engines I'm... Oh, no, it's what warp foil dynamics. Yeah, so you, I still you have, have a focus. Yeah, I have a focus. I'm going to do that. Focus. <sighs> All right, you get the three successes you need. Now, well, and I used my value as well. Okay, so you get uh, two momentum back. And uh, if I remember correctly, uh, it's three momentum to get rid of the breach. So are you going to spend those two momentum in a threat or give me three momentum to get rid of that breach? Uh, let me pull this up real quick. Because if you don't get rid of the breach, you do get rid of the increased difficulty problems, but you still have the breach. And that's making us lose a power every turn? Uh-huh. Well, no, it would have been repaired, so you wouldn't be losing a power every turn. So, you are trained to direct and lead damage party. Oh, I did that on my own, though. Your team, oh, well, was team leader. And repair parties to giving them guidance and expert knowledge. If you succeed at the damage control task, which you did, you may spend three momentum to also repair one breach. Okay, Captain. Yeah, let's do it. So we lost our momentum, mm -hmm. but we dropped the engineering. Yeah, but we dropped down to one breach on the engines. Mm -hmm. All right. So, that is your turn. Tax ship A. At this point, they see sort of see blood in the water. They are blindly in their zeal to take down the torchbearer are simply just going to fire again. So, attack ship A will hit you. Let's resolve that first. Uh that's vicious 1, so that's 9, 10, 11, 12 reduced by 5. So, you are taking 7 damage. Uh, you have no shields, so that's going to be two breaches. Let's resolve that. Also, I hope that no one's annoyed by the fact we've spent most of the session in Starship Combat, but this is... Nope. I, I'm, I'm hoping people are having a fun time with it. Uh, okay. Oh, this is my favorite. So this is structure. I'll roll for that in a moment. And engines. So engines are going to oh, get hit shit. again. <laughs> and structure is going to get hit. You sure you're just not using a six-sided die? <laughs> I, I, hey, you see me typing it in, man. Yeah, I know, I know. It just keeps going up on the same things. All right, let me see if anyone gets hit during the structure. No one gets hit, but I believe you are considered now damaged structure. So let's see what that does. Damaged structure. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Increase the complication range of all engineering tasks to repair systems by two and reduces the re ship's resistance by one. That's very important. Oh, no. All right, so attack ship D. Let's see what happens with it. Attack ship D will hit you. Jesus. For a... I don't even need to... It's two more breaches. It's a lot. It's, it's, a lot. it's two more breaches. So, first breach... I believe that is also engines. No, that is sensors. So your two breaches the sensors. Then we do another breach. Another breach to sensors, which I believe that brings you to three breaches for your sensors. Yes. Yes, I have it. I have. And the that's ship. that's disabled. That is disabled, which means that the sensor systems cannot be used to perform or assist any tasks. Period, and that all attacks made by the ship increase in difficulty by plus two. And the difficulty to repair this is four. So, uh, that happens. Uh, the Jem'Hadar shoot the ever-loving crap out of the Torchbearer. Uh, at this point, your port nacelles are streaming. Uh, your leaking Atmo in places. Your sensors are disabled. It's not good. Uh, but, if it matters, it is your turn. Where's, where's the Arcadia? Where's the Arcadia? They show up after your turn's over. Ow. Move us as far far as we can. So this you have all of one power at the moment. And you could move um, up to six squares. But it is still a control and con at difficulty two. Who wants to roll that? Because I'm good, Con. Well, you've also directed, so if you do it, Crowley, that's an increased difficulty. Alright. And who's, who's the helm officer? That's J Los. He's already... He's kind of gone twice already. Yeah, he's he's kind of already gone. So, you either need to have someone not adept at Con doing this, or you're going to be doing it at a difficulty 3. Did Los use his determination yet? No, and he does not. Um, I don't mind using one. Do it. <laughs> all right, what do I got? Um, when all else fails, improvise. Yeah. This point, you'll get out and push. <laughs> So uh, this will be a control plus con, and the torchbearer will assist with engines plus con. It is a difficulty hey. three, but you have ship. two successes to begin with. Ship does not help you. All right, let's no, ship. roll it. You say, uh, so it must be daring con? Control con. I need to see at least one <sighs> success here. Oh, I might Wait, have been I only need one success? Only one. You get the one. <laughs> All right. It, so, it delayed for dramatic effect. Yeah. No more, no less. <laughs> so, uh, where within six would you like to move? Whichever way is closest toward the Arcadia. All right. Let's say you get to about there. But that will take your remaining power. And you are completely without power, without shields, without anything. But, drift. like a knight in shining armor, it is at this point that the Arcadia A's secondary hull drops out of warp. With a hole on top of it. With a hole on top of it. <laughs> so, uh, at this point, we're going to do a completely fresh round but the Arcadia A is in now in the turn order and can act. So let me just uh, quickly go through all the uh, the buttons here. All right, so Refresh. Torchbearer, uh, you guys get five. Arcadia A, you get five. Jem'Hadar, each get three. All right, so which one of you guys would like to move first? Uh. Focus on repairing engines, I guess, again. <laughs> Restore them, get power going back up. 
Well, remember, because you have a breach to your enough uh, breaches to your structure, the All complication right. range is increased by two. Just so you know. There's not much we can do then, because we're blind. We're blind. <laughs> Are we able to like transfer shields over to them? Or? Well, the, the yeah, the torchbearer doesn't have to go first. Yeah, the um, torchbearer doesn't have to go first. The the Arcadia you know, Eight can go. The Arcadia can go. We're just in smoke-filled rooms with red light flashing, with no way to see what's happening. <laughs> we don't even know if the Arcadia. Yeah, we don't, we don't even know. The yeah, Arcadia. you don't know. You got. Oh nothing. no. Oh yeah. The good news is we're no longer broadcasting to give them that one additional <laughs> to hit us. <laughs> That was hey, um, right here. I guess we could always raise the periscope to take a look around. <laughs> <laughs> Detach the warhead. Yeah. Uh, uh, is there some kind of task to extend shields around another ship? We can make one up. Uh, I think that's the first thing we need to do to ha is have the Arcadia or A um, extend shields around the Torchbearer. Okay. Uh, let's make this a control and security and this will be assisted by the ship's structure and security this and will be what? a difficulty of two and, and you can transfer up to half of your shields to the torchbearer but in order for it to remain you must stay within close range Okay, Jim, what like what console position would be uh this would be a tactical action. So well, I believe someone would Janus. have to roll for high long or someone would have to roll for sin. Uh and Janice is the tactical officer, I thought now. Are we still I thought you were con. Okay. I guess we didn't talk about that. We didn't inform GM there, uh Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you're on your way. It'll happen soon. Okay. Okay. Well, never mind. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can do the task though. Like that's not. Um... Also, Captain, I know, or Admiral, I know you got to leave in like nine minutes. Is that about right? Uh, we can go a little longer than that, but not too much. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you want to do it, because we're probably not going to move, you can you can make this task now. Okay. Well. uh... I'm not sure if mine's the best stats out of the four, three of us. Uh, in that case, I'll I'll spend my turn to give an order to have it done. Okay. Um, so I'll take the assist action, uh, okay. which is I'm just assisting, um, and then someone else can do it on their turn. But I'm gonna keep the initiative for zero momentum because of my uh, one of my talents. Okay. So that is the command action. So who is doing okay. the extending shields? Is it Sin? Is it Hylong? Is it Janus? Is it Ricky Bobby? Who is it? I think it's I think it's uh, Sin. Okay. So if someone could please do Sin, she's doing control security. And then someone needs to get structure security for the ship. And I'll this is a nice difficulty of two. I guess I'll roll for Sin since this is my turn. I will also say that this costs one power. All right. Uh, what was her role? Uh, control control security. security. Ship or tactical mm -hmm. is the focus. Most definitely. And then I get to assist with command. Yep, presence command from you. Did you say it's structure security? Yeah, yeah for the ship. Okay, no help from the ship, but I do see green from Tahan, so you get two momentum. And how many, sh how much shields are you transferring to the torchbearer? So we've got. You have fourteen at the moment. Let's give them eight. You can only give them up to half. Oh, let's give them seven. All right, so you go down to seven. They go up to seven. All right. So, again, as long as you stay within close range, you can maintain that shield link to the Torchbearer. But should they or you move out of range, the seven power that is transferred to them vanishes. Just so you know. Alright, so, that's the Arcadia A. Up next is Attack Ship A. And I have to check distances here. 
All right, attack ship A is going to move... Actually, attack ship A is actually just going to fire torpedoes at the Arcadia A. So let's see what attack ship A rolls. Wow. Just, just, wow. Um, I'm then going to spend some threat to re-roll those four zeros. Oh, uh, can I say one thing retroactively? Sure. Uh, can I have made that my direct action? The only difference there is mm -hmm. that it it wouldn't have taken up our uh, tactical slot. It would have just been my yeah. We can do my that. one per one. Per. I don't know. Okay, cool. With that. Okay, so uh -huh. needless to say, here uh, the piercing on the torpedo is uh, not great, or it is great because hold on, I can math. Hold on. I am looking at polar on bank. I am not looking at torpedo. So we're zeros. going to just uh, take back that threat. And instead, you will only be dealed five, which I don't even think gets... Well, the Arcadia A's resistance is what? Uh, your scale four. Uh, the secondary holds scale five. Okay, scale five. So I don't even think it gets past your resistance. Yeah, no, doesn't it doesn't even resistance. doesn't even get past your resistance. All right, so that happens. Attack ship D, and then the torchbearer can go. Attack ship D is going to spend its helm action to get all the way up to here, and then I'm spending some threat so that it can go again. And it is going to attempt to unload a full cannon barrage into the secondary hull. And so. Just for clarification, uh, boys, it is seven because we have a blade of. Oh, there you go. All right. See what happens. Okay. So they will hit you. I will be spending some one threat to reroll those five zeros. Okay, so that is four, nine, ten. And I'm also going to be spending one, two, three. You have seven. I will spend four on penetration, which means you guys will be taking a grand total of nine damage. So you lose shields, which is a breach. You did more than five. That's a breach. Let's see what those breaches are. Welcome to wartime, everybody. <laughs> All right, so structure, of course, uh, and structure, of course. All right, so let's let's re let's let's roll these. Let's let's see what you got. All right, so first off, all right, no one's hurt. Second off, no one's hurt. All right, so tax ship C swoops in, sees that the Arcadia is the problem here, and just slams into it with cannon fire. And the Arcadia A shields buckle, and consoles on the bridge burst out in showers of sparks, and damage control uh, teams start reporting in that, uh, yeah, the structure of the Arcadia A, not great at the moment. Uh, you guys are considered disabled, I believe. Uh, also, our shields are down then, too. No, so I'm being nice here and saying that the torchbearers, uh, the shields you're transferring to them, remain up. I'm being nice. Or at least I'm trying to anyway. And I tell you what, I think at this point, we are coming up on the turn where people have to start running. So as much as I hate to cliffhanger us here, I think this is where we're going to have to cliffhanger. This is a good cliffhanger. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and end the stream. So players stick around for a little bit longer, unless you've got to run Admiral. But uh, to anyone watching, hopefully you've had uh, fun watching. I know this was a very combat-centric episode. Um, these guys will be returning two weeks from now, and then I should know by then if it is returning to weekly. Um, but thank you guys for watching on Twitch or on YouTube, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.